Hi, this is Paul at Focus Pulling, and the aim of this video is to be pretty comprehensive about the powering options you have for your rig, starting out with reviewing the Atomos power station, moving on to some V-mount options, and lastly, USB power. This Atomos power station is a new product that comes in two versions. This is the photo version. Only slightly different is the video version, and what's different is that this photo version comes with some fairly smaller batteries at just 2600 mAh. The video version comes with double those amount, times two as well. And what you see here is the base unit inside the custom case, um, the couple of batteries, and then also some, if you will, dummy batteries that plug into the battery ports of the Panasonic GH3 and GH4 and the Sony A7 series cameras. It turns out that this case is the same one they'll be shipping soon for the uh, Atomos Shogun. But on the other side, you get the power supply charger and cable, and then some Velcro ties and the instruction manual. The back of the unit has three ports. Two of them are outputs that can be used at the same time, or just one at a time. And there's an input port for that charger that they included with the whole system, which can charge everything all at once. On the side of the unit, you can select between high, medium, and low as a setting for the switching point, and that means when does the battery switch from one that's already hooked onto the back to another? You don't have to have both batteries connected and charged. But if you have both, then one of the great virtues of this power station is that if one of them runs out, then the other takes over. So you're guaranteed continuous power, and then you could replace the other. The side of the unit has two USB ports also that are additional outputs at different amperage levels depending on your needs. The design of the power station is really modular and it's intended to be something that you can connect onto your rig to the extent that you're either locked down or even moving around handheld. And here you have a thumb screw to attach to the bottom of a camera that normally goes into a tripod plate or tripod itself. The battery latches are nicely firm for that type of interface. And you can see that there's one button for each side and when you push it in it unlatches it so that you can take it out again. To put them in, they just snap into place. Now that we have the batteries installed, the unit's on, which unfortunately is continuous. The lights continue flashing and telling you what the levels are at without there being any power switch. So the only way to really turn it off is to unfortunately take out the batteries. So what these lights tell you is how much battery power is left on each side, and they turn red when they get low. But also, the side that's currently drawing power has a light that's flashing, as you see here. Here's a chart that they have on the unit which explains the different voltages. You might want to pause the video and analyze that. You can also find these specs at Atomos' website. So with that thumb screw on the top that attaches into the base of your camera, there's a corresponding socket at the bottom, also quarter inch 20, that you can use to screw into a tripod or to a tripod plate. I'd mentioned earlier that the difference between the photo and video versions is that photo just comes with the GH3, GH4 dummy adapters and the Sony A7 series adapters. And this is the Sony adapter that's basically going into the battery port of the new Sony A7R2. And you can see that normally, of course, a battery doesn't have a cord sticking out of it. So Sony had already anticipated this solution. Um, in the design of the camera and with this closer up angle you can see this little rubber um, flexible port that opens up that allows the cable to come out. So with that connected you do receive power and of course it's not telling you that it's charging per se it's rather just telling you what the battery life is and kind of reporting on it from the power station itself. So um, you get the front indicators that the power station tells you about how full each respective battery is. And coming around to the front, by the way, we have a chance to see where the camera sits on the power station. And the fact is, since that thumb screw is centered on the power station, between cameras you'll never know quite how it'll sit, um, depending on how centered the socket is and the camera itself. But that might not matter if it's on a tripod to begin with. Anyways, when everything's hooked up, the power station is connected to the A7R2. It tells me a certain amount that's left, but I'd rely on the power station's own indicators probably before this. Moving along to the other coupler that comes with the photo version, this GH4 also has sort of a rubber hatch through which one of those um, cords can come out. 
And when you shut the latch, then the barrel connector goes again into the back of the power station, and then into the GH4's uh, battery port with it being latched shut and secure. Granted, there's an irony in using this with the GH4 because one of its strengths is the fact that the battery really runs for a long size considering its form factor compared to something like, let's say, the A7R2 and the, really the whole A7 series. And then, of course, the famously the Blackmagic Pocket, which goes under a half an hour where this can really come in handy, but we'll get to that a little later. So here, with the GH4, everything's powered up and connected, and once again, it's telling us, like on the A7R2, that there's a certain amount of battery left, but once again, you rely really on the Atomos uh, power station's indicators to tell you how much. Moving along to much longer-lasting battery options, this is the new Kyo Maxstar V-mount battery, and I like this because it has a lot of capacity with some interesting features. Of course, V-mount as a standard is not something that you would just handhold and clip onto a DSLR rig. Rather, it's traditionally been used on large ENG camcorders. One of the features, though, on this unit that's unique is that when you push a button on the side, you see a readout of how much life is left in the battery, which is similar to the Atomos Power Station's uh, four indicator um, display. And there you see on the back the V-mount interface, which locks into place very firmly. On the side of the unit, there's also the charging port on the right, which is in D-tap. And on the left, uniquely, there's also a USB 5 volt output. Here's the charger that comes with the Kyo Maxstar battery with that D-tap um, interface. So what is V-mount usually used for? Well, like I said, it's these really large camcorders. In this case, we're looking at a diagram that shows how it connects onto the Sony PMW F55. Um, also, for other cameras, we have like this interface that hooks onto the back of the Sony FS7 for longer battery life than the normal batteries. And the Blackmagic Ursa also can adapt to V mount, and most Ursa users use V mount. And even this new Blackmagic Ursa Mini will also accept V mount as one of the primary battery formats. But what if you have a rig that doesn't accept V-mount natively, but you still want the extra durability and extremely long battery life of the V-mount format? Well, there are companies like Came TV in this case, that make these sort of sleds that take V-mount batteries and then adapt them to a variety of voltage outputs. In this case, just like on any standard V-mount interface, the battery slides into position and snaps into place, but that latch on the right you can push in and then it releases it out again. Running in parallel to the power station, there's also multiple outputs instead of just one going straight to a connected camcorder. So in this case, we have on the side of this unit a standard 12 volt barrel connector DC output and then a standard DTAP output at 7.2 volts and then a barrel connector that matches that and then a smaller barrel connector that goes 5 volt, which is the same as USB, but also can power some other devices like a Zoom H4n. It has a power button on it, and that activates the ports. However, you might find that there's a bit of drain when you even have it off. But that light does at least warn you that the battery is running through the sled and out to all the ports. You can have more than one device connected at once using all the available power. Granted, an interface like this is sort of useless if you can't somehow get it fixed onto something. And so this has a standard um, 15 millimeter rail mount interface that's very flexible. And in this case, you can see that I've mounted it onto some rails on a shoulder pad, which acts also as a nice counterweight. So you hook a battery onto it and then you sling it over and around and towards the back of a shoulder mount with your long 50 millimeter wires going to the camera up front, it creates a nice counterbalance while also providing a lot of power that can really, in most cases, take you through an entire day of shooting, especially with a small camera like the GH4 or the Blackmagic. In this case, we can take a DTAP connector and then get an adapter for the barrel connector at the other end of it that goes to that really small size of the Blackmagic Pockets input. 
And you can see on the screen, as long as it's got that blue charging icon state, that means that it's getting power, and you can see it just bumped up from 85 to 86 percent. As I mentioned earlier, the Atomus Power Station video version adds a few more dummy batteries for Nikon, Canon, and Sony cameras. Um, the Came TV interface comes with one that we just saw for the 5D Mark III and other cameras that take that battery type. It also comes with a variety of other cables that adapt to different size connectors, but it shouldn't limit you because as long as you match the voltages carefully and the current that's necessary for each device, you're good to go. You know, in a prior rigging video, I mentioned the fact that uh, a lot of devices are starting to take USB power. And so in the case of this older generation Tascam DR60D, it took power, and here I'm hooking it into one of those um, mobile phone chargers that are so readily available everywhere. So in the case of this Kayo Maxtar V-mount battery, without even connecting it to an adapter, or also in the case of the Atomus power station with its USB outputs, I can just go straight into the newer generation Tascam DR70D, which also has a USB port. And when you turn it on, it asks you whether you want to treat that USB input as bus power, and you say yes. Similarly, on the new A7R2, unlike the predecessors in the A7 series, when you plug a micro USB cable into the port, it doesn't just charge the battery, but it actually can provide bus power. You can run the camera off of it. And I think this is a feature we're going to start seeing on a lot more cameras, and we're all the better for it. So thanks for checking this out, and I hope there was some information you can use. There are links to all the products I mentioned in the caption below, and a link over to the blog to keep the conversation going.